Holbrook, whose Titans went down to the Raiders over the weekend. And uh, I'm wondering, coach, uh, what that felt like, your first introduction to NRL football as a head coach? Yeah, it was definitely disappointing. You know, I think... Um Prior to the game, we'd done everything right as coaches and as players. We'd had a great pre-season, as everyone has in all 16 clubs, and performed well in the nines and, and had a really good trial against Brisbane. And then, and then, as you say, we, you know, we went down to Canberra and just got it wrong early. Probably the first 10 or 15 minutes um, sort of dipped our toes in and, you know, that cost us. I'm going to get back to the footy in just a moment uh, because we're kind of... I guess you could call it unprecedented times for just about everybody that's working mm. in the game at the moment. Um, some might even label them scary. H how are you handling as a, a head coach with a group of young men this global pandemic that just is surrounding us in every nook and cranny? Yeah, well, it's not, not ideal for anyone, is it? So I think f from us as a club, you know, we had our doctor in this morning talking to the coaching staff and the players about what, what best practices we can do. and. And I think um, that's all we can do, you know, as a whole hand sanitizers are everywhere and you know, bringing the lunch into us instead of going out to get it and, you know, just doing everything we can to, to obviously not, not pick up the virus and, and be able to continue playing because I think that's, that's what we all want as a game. How much is it preoccupying your, your playing group? Are, they, are, are you going through different scenarios? Are you sort of trying to predict what might happen, how you handle that, or are they just trying to just get out of it and just let other people deal with it? Yeah, no, I think the, the best approach, Kenny, is just to get on with it because, you know, we'll leave that up to the governing body and so, so many things are changing within it, so I don't think we can predict it. I don't think we know where it's going to finish and how quick it's going to go away, but in terms of what it is, from, from my take is that you know, as long as you've got a good immune system, if you're unfortunate to get it, you're going to recover from it. It's mm. just a, obviously a bad flu. And, um, you know, while we can all try and just take all the precautions we can to stay healthy and, and keep the game going, I think it's our best approach. But do you yeah. see any doubt amongst any of your players? Because, I mean, we've got Sam Burgess, who only retired at the end of last year. You know, bullet a gate. I, I, if I was still playing, I'd want to keep playing through. You've got Cameron Smith second-guessing whether or not the competition should roll forward. I mean, so inside your group, are you having sort of conversations with players that are taking very different views and are they getting pressure from their families in any way? Yeah, I, I, I don't know. Um, you know, it was awkward Friday when is the game going ahead, is it not? We're down in Canberra and, um, you know, players, family and friends are coming in. Were they going to be allowed into the game? But um, so, look, I, it's not ideal for anybody, you know, and I think that's, that's what we've all got to acknowledge. But I think as a game, if we can just stay healthy enough and, and don't pick it up, then, then I think, you know, we've, we've got to keep playing. OK. Back to the footy. Yeah. Weekend's game. What was the good and the bad in the Titans' performance? Oh, you know, the, the good, I guess, was probably after the initial 20 minutes. I think when we got on with it and got on with the game and, and competed, um, the bad was the first 20. You know, I think we'd, we've worked so hard and... To get everything right and then to start the way we did was uh, was disappointing as so coaches. So specifics in the back. Oh, I, I, I just thought the way we started the game, we, we looked like we weren't ready to play. Um, and whether that's, you know, I've spoke to the group about that, whether that's old habits and our first away trip, I think we've made a, a lot of changes um, how we've gone about training. And, and as I said, really good signs in the nines, good in the trial against Brisbane. And then first week away, I just thought we probably didn't... Well, if you don't start well, I think it's your preparation. So we've got to look at it as a coach and as a playing group. You know, we're all in it together and, and think, well, something's got to change because if we continue that, then, then we're not going to play well. So I think, um, you know, when it's initial start of a game that you're off in in every area um, is, is, a, is a worry, especially round one of all rounds. But as I said, the, the good thing was at least we, we got on with it and had a real good crack after that. So. so you come into a club that's run last the past couple of seasons. It hasn't made... It's made the finals once in its life, life span. What have you got to change? How do you... From the ground up, how do you change what's been going on there? Yeah. A lot of those changes have already been made, which is great. So I think, um, you know, I've said a number of times, like now now the club's in a really good spot. I think they've got great people in the front office. The owners are committed to the club. Um, we've got great facilities. We, we, there's no, I'll use the word excuse anymore. I think we've got everything there to perform. I think we've got a, a great junior nursery. The game's growing up there on the Gold Coast. And, and for me, um, you know, when people say, oh, they're just there and, you know, 
rugby league's there, but they're not really trying. That, that's an excuse we've got to get past. Unfortunately, for 20 minutes we show that and the rest of the game we didn't. And for me, it's about... Um, I had to change the environment. We've got to get the players excited. You know, I love coaching. I want them to love playing, but we've got to work hard and enjoy it are the two things I want to see. And and um, and we've done that um, prior to, you know, the, the 20 minutes on the weekend. So uh, in terms of the Gold Coast region, like, it, it's a great nursery for rugby league. It's a great sporting area. It's got the best climate for sport. Mm. Um, and the only Queensland Cup, Burley Bears are at the Gold Coast. They won the Queensland Cup. So, mm. you know, I remind our players of that. I don't want to hear any more about, oh, we just, it's a nice place to live. We've been uh, the old player too. Yeah, that's right. You yep. want to come back and have I'm a run. Oh, boy. I was there at the inaugural golf day. Most <laughs> of them had their shirts off in 42 degree heat. It was yeah, only nine so, holes too, by the yeah. way. It's got to get rugby league first and then the nice place to live. You know, there's no better place to live, but we've mm. got to, we're there for a reason. We've got to be a successful rugby league team. Can I ask about your working relationship with Mel Meninga? Um, what is his role exactly at the moment? How do you utilise his brain, his experience, and what sort of influence does he have? On the club, yeah, obviously he's very versatile with his role. Like you know, head of culture and performance amongst our office staff and 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 football staff. And I think for Mao, for me, he's just a great person to have associated with our club. Like as you said, we're, you know, we haven't set where we need to sit as a, a successful club now, the 16. And to have a guy like Mao Meninga associated with with our club is is as good as we can get. You know, I think he's he's committed to seeing him do well. He's had a big hand in getting our pathways up and running now, so we can keep the best kids. And and that's what we want to do. We want to have the you know, best Queensland kids playing for the Gold Coast that live there. We don't want to lose them all. And and Mao's been great with that. He's he's. Um, Great to talk to about out the game and discuss players all the time, and and obviously he's still being the, the current um, Australian coach and 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 the Queensland legend. So for for me he's been great, and in um, the initial conversations I had with him when I was in England were I just found him extremely honest, and everything he said was true, and and everything about the club. So um, you know I'm I'm really grateful that he's associated with the club. So what does success look like this season for the Titans? Hey, it's a tough one, Kenny, because I. You know, I don't want to sit here and say, oh, top four, and then people yeah. say, you're silly. And I don't want to say we can run eighth and then we finish eighth and think that's good enough or anything. Yeah. I, I can't. We're a team that I definitely know we're going to get a what lot better. What about internally? Do you, do you have markers internally about... Well, well I've got, man, markers. Like, every team's got good players and we're no different. So I, I do want to play finals, but I don't want to come out with bold predictions. I just think, you know, we're, we are good enough. I think we're good enough to, to compete with every team, you know, and I think as coaching staff that, that we're all there, that we're going to prepare them as best we can to win every game. We won't. We didn't win on the weekend. But I've got no issue with, with our team, um, but it's about we've got to be consistent how we play. And, and, you know, for 60 minutes we were. We can't, we can't do that too often or, or we're not going to be. What's the key to unlocking Ash Taylor? Oh, look, I think, um, you know, from, from when I've come in, I think I, I've said to him, you know, I want to help you. We all want him to play well, but he's got to help himself and, and everything I've seen, he's doing that. Now, a mixed game on Friday, but prior to Friday, as a lot of my players did, so... But, um, you know, prior to that, his pre-season means great, you know. He's, he's really changed his diet, he's working hard. Like, all all the evidence is there that he's going to have a good season for us, you know, and, and you know, good in the trial and just... Um, you know, I don't want to be putting pressure on him. People keep talking about... You know, he's so vital to your team. He is, and you're, 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 yeah. you're, whether you whether you like the argument or not, he's on good good money at the club, and that's for a, to pro, to provide a service. Yep. Which certainly last year he didn't provide. Yep. This year he's got to provide if he's going to continue on to be a a major money maker in the game. Yeah. Yeah. Look. Uh, uh, I agree, but I also just want him to go out and play his role. I think we've got to try and get away from who's earning what and what they're yeah. doing. I think if he's just got to go out and do his role for the team, and I, I need more from him, and he knows that. I think he can, you know, things like kick the ball more and things like that, yeah. which he's happy to do. So we've just got to give him more ownership, but, but also not put pressure on him. I think, you know, we all know what a great player he is, and as you said, he is a key yeah. for us. We need him fire and... Um, you know, he's done everything right to, yeah. to set himself up, so now we've just got to get on with it and, yeah. and he's got to play well. Now, I say this respectfully, but it's the Titans haven't got one of the strongest lists in the competition. So I've got a couple of questions on roster management, which my mate here knows fascinates me. So I remember Wayne Bennett said to me many years ago that he finally figured it out as a coach. The penny dropped when he developed an eye for talent. He could figure out what type of player 
you needed in your team to win a comp. So I'm wondering when Justin Holbrook's looking across the player market, what do you look for in a player? What are the attributes you value most? Yeah, d does Andrew Johns want a game? I think, uh, <laughs> look... Junior Shimon is one of them. Yeah, yeah, Junius is great. Look, I think for me it's about, and where we're at, it's about getting people that really want Gold Coast to be successful, you know, and it's about your, your AJ Brimsons, your Philip Semmies, your Moak, you know, all, all the young guys that, that are there that want to succeed and, and they're the future of our club and they're the ones that we want to keep hold of and, and bring others in as we need. But in terms of the roster, look, I, I've got... I'm happy with our current players. Like, look on the weekend, unfortunately, like AJ Brimson, who I think is our best, he couldn't get on the field. Mo, Mo's not right yet, and I've got big Shannon Boyd who's going to make an impact. So we're missing a few key Ryan guys. We've lost Ryan James for the year, which we've got to move on. So we're missing key guys in round one, and I know every club's going to miss players, but in terms of um, our side, I've got no, I, I'm confident with our players, um, and, and we've just got to now, you know, I think it, we've got everything in place up there. I've said that, now we've got to get on and, and do it when it counts. So the second part is that if players make coaches, not the other way around, how much say does the head coach at the Gold Coast Titans have over his list when there are others, Melman Inger included, having a contribution? What's the, 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 the roster management uh, decision-making process on the Gold Coast? Yeah, well, I think that the biggest thing with the, the roster and the salary cap is it's ongo ongoing nearly every day. You, you're never actually finished for a year. Players are coming and going all the time. You know, I've just picked up Sam Lasani to, to obviously cover for Ryan James. So that's ongoing and, and I've got as much say as I like. Like, I, don't, I can't be bogged down in that all day. It's my job to get on and coach the players. But to have Mal there and we've got Ezra as our recruitment guy and we've got a, a committee of people that are involved in it, which, which is great because we've got so many good people that can identify talent. Um, but, but I'm more than happy with my involvement in it. But as I said, I don't want to be bogged down with the day-to-day -day of that because that's, that's never ending, that stuff. Can I ask uh, from a bigger picture standpoint, uh, more personally for you, uh, talk us through the journey from player to head coach when you kind of knew that's what you wanted to do and when you started to figure out that, hey, I, I might be OK at this. <laughs> I don't want to bore you too much. Give Please, a short version. You can't nah. bore me. Trust me. Look, I think, for, yeah. For, well, I'll try. Uh, look, for myself, um, I love playing the game, but I wasn't a great player, and and I didn't have a playing career to to help escalate me in the coaching sense. So, if, obviously, if you're good enough to be a great player, then then the board of directors have an affiliation with your fans like you, and and your, your inroads naturally good, and and so it should be. You've you've done something great as a player, so I've got no issue with players that have gone on as coaches, but for the ones like myself that, that haven't got that, then it's about just, well, I was going to say doing the hard yards, but it wasn't hard for me. Like, I started as a captain coach down with Dapto in the, in the Wollongong comp, and um, once I, you know, I hung in there for a while, played a lot of reserve grade and thought, uh, you know, and, and my time at Newcastle sort of showed me that that was my level. I used to, back when reserve grade had played before first grade, so I'd play my game, have a shower and then watch the good halfback play in Andrew Johns. And when you see him play and you're looking at yourself, you're going, I think I found my level. So um, in terms of coaching, once I started captain coaching, that's when I really loved it, you know, when you've got to say in what you're doing at training, who you pick, how you get the best out of players that have... Some are sitting at uni all day bored, others have been laying bricks all day and then you've got to get them all to combine and, and you know, we had some success there and... Uh, that's what got me into it. Um, prior to that, I, I, I didn't you know, see a future. I just enjoyed the game and then got involved, um, you know, coach reserve great at the Bulldogs and, and was good enough to win a couple of comps. Had a good side there, but it was all... That level was man management. You, you're dealing with a lot of disgruntled first graders and getting the best out of them. But then when they promoted MYC, that was seen as a, above the reserve grade. So I sort of went backwards in coaching, but to help go forward. But and coach a couple under 20s to grand final qualifiers. And, um, and I just love coaching all the way through. So I never had my heart set on had to be an NRL coach. I thought if I keep doing a good job, keep enjoying what I'm doing, then things will keep and opening. It got and very successful the time you landed in England. I mean, winning percentage through the roof. Yeah, look, that was great there. You know, I got, to the, you know, Robbo got me at, at the Roosters, which are two and a half great years there. And then out of the blue come, come a call from England that, that you never know when's going to come. And it was all off the back of everything I'd already done and, and went over there and loved it. You know, it's, it's great experience. The people are the, the absolute best in the world over in the north of England and, um, yeah, had, had a terrific time. Easily could have stayed uh, longer, but, you know, the, the excitement of, of coaching in NRL sort of brought me back. 
And now you're back, eh? And look how relaxed he looks at the moment. Wow. Okay? So young in his career. <laughs>